Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Some fantastic shirts, I see. Some fantastic geek and sundry shirts as well, I see. Uh, is everybody uh, excited for Felicia and Will this morning? Absolutely. You guys have been enjoying your con thus far, your Nerd HQ thus far, yes? Fantastic. Thank you all for all of your support. By the way, with all the standing room only uh, included, you guys have collectively helped raise $7,000 for Operation Smile this morning. So please give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, a couple of house rules, a lot of you already know them. Is there any flash photography allowed at this panel? No. Is there any video allowed at this panel? No. Is there fun allowed at this panel? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, yeah, there is. Uh, so listen, I actually have to go run out and do some other... <laughs> no, no, they said. I gotta go do some, some crap. I gotta go do some other stuff. But my friend Aisha Tyler said she'd come by and help host this thing. So Aisha Tyler! How's it going? Yeah, I'm gonna sit in Zach's seat. I hope there's still butt heat in it. Um, uh, very quickly, guys, I'm super happy to be here. Um, I, uh, I love Zach and everything he stands for, and thank you guys for coming out for Conversations for a Cause. You get to have fun, and you get to help people, so you guys are all on freaking fire. That's what you're doing right now. Being awesome. I have had 47 minutes of sleep, cumulatively. <laughs> Not last night, since Wednesday. Since Wednesday, that's how much I've slept. All together, I cobbled together less than one hour of human rest. So, if I start to uh, fall asleep in that chair like Morgan Freeman on a press junket, just <laughs> throw something at me. Um, but I'm really excited to be here because I'm gonna bring up two of my very, very good friends who I love and adore, and they're amazing. Please welcome Will Wheaton and Felicia Day! <laughs> This is the most like a lady I've ever seen you. It's because um, I had a pixie cut. Um, everybody on Twitter will know that. And, uh, and then I went to Europe because, not because on vacation, but because I went through the salad bowl phase of the haircut. So it was and like- And you figured you'd just fit in in Europe? Well, I could just hide in another continent. You know, the dumb and dumber phase where it like yeah. goes over the ear. Yeah. Um, you and spend then, a lot of time in Holland? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> And that's a Dutch boy paint joke, by the way. You, that's a real obscure... It's a long way to go. It is a long way to go for something that's not very funny. Yeah. It, uh, and then, so basically, I'm into headbands now because it kind of... It, 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 it sort of redeems because there's a little... St there's a still a little bit of Caesar, you know, salad bowl going in the back. So, what? Well, it's just that, I mean, you know, you were very uh, ballet-like and uh you know like choreographed as you sat down and i don't know how we get from your pixie haircut trauma to that i mean it was a trauma the salad bowl phase was trauma right because my mom did that it was like boop there you go you're go to school or don't go to school however she <laughs> i'm so tired <laughs> Aisha got 47 minutes of sleep. I'm in like the 43, okay? Hey, I will fight you. Right? I, <laughs> I will fight you, we'll wrestle, and then we'll both fall asleep on the carpet like kittens. Yeah, like, the, your, your, the, fight, the fight that you guys have would be you both standing up and going, oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, also, by the way, we're all, we all have the same laugh. <laughs> Sort of like a desperate dolphin waiting to get out of San Diego. Ah, get me out! <laughs> I could thank you. Oh, I enjoy you. You're the real MVP. You make everything better. Um, you guys, welcome to Sunday at San Diego. Have you guys had an amazing convention? I have to say, I save up. Um, I'm an old lady in my heart. Like 87. I have, even have one of those beds that goes. <laughs> not kidding. Can you know why? Because you know, old people know how to live in certain ways. Okay? They rub creams on places that hurt. Right. And they, and they have beds that sit up. And they poop wherever they want to because they're wearing diapers and they don't care. I don't know about that one. But um, 
So I save up all year, and then I'm like, I'm going out until 3 a.m. for three days straight. And then I look at people, and I'm like, how do you young people do this during the year? <laughs> so I'm ready to go back into the cocoon <laughs> life. I had a really good time attending NAPCON yesterday. <laughs> NAPCON was awesome. Fight, 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 fight. Fight him. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take questions, and I don't have my contacts on because literally the surface of my, surface of my eyeball is like the Mars. It's cratered, dusty. It has a rover driving around on it. <laughs> <laughs> if you look closely, or maybe it's a mite. Oh. I don't know. We all have we all have skin mites all over us. You know that? No, I do know that. You know how many pounds of sh skin you shed a year as a uh, human? Uh, uh, how many pounds? Yes. Um, skin uh, in, the, in the course of a year, mm -hmm. um, 30? 10. Oh. God, you're really skinny. <laughs> I mean, skin E. <laughs> Full of skin. Full of skin, yeah, I am. You miss loofah like five times a day. Well, I mean, I was thinking about the size of the average American and just assuming that there was more skin in America than there is in the rest of the world. Come on. So, Maybe. What? Just because of our processed food. Guys, don't boo me. We're not a healthy culture. That's not a... a <laughs> it is. I saw fact. it in the USA Today. We are, yeah. we are not as healthy as we that's could right. be. That's right. Well, would... and, if you, and if you read it in USA Today, that infographic wouldn't lie to you. It was a... I mean, it's some of the, some of the most in-depth infographic-based reporting that exists between full-page ads is in USA Today. Really? USA Today, telling the front desk, I don't want it since 2001. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna take questions, and there are people with microphones, and I can't see them, so we'll- I see a person with a microphone over oh. there because my eyes don't have mites in them. Uh, um, good morning. Good morning. Alicia. Hi. Good morning. Um, so, first of all, I wanted to thank you for um, Geek and Sundry and Tabletop. It's um, amazing you're welcome. what you guys have done. Thank um, you. Me and my brother have actually bonded more over it. He, like, bought Munchkin. We love watching Co-Optitude and Tabletop. He's bonded funny. over Munchkin. Usually that yeah. breaks people up. Yeah, it usually kind of goes the other way. Yeah. If you got to really want to strengthen your relationship, play Diplomacy. <laughs> that, that's a joke for the super gamers. <laughs> Which everybody here seems to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my question was, through this journey, through Tabletop and through Geek and Sundry, what, is this, what has been one of your most memorable memories? Like through, like through the Kickstarter thing or through anything you've done to get to the point where you are and what you've done so far? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, there's been so many highs, and I have to say that this is the weirdest coincidence, but I woke up this morning, uh, I mean, if you could call it waking up from the 42 minutes, full, it's gonna be like one and a half minutes by the time this is over. But uh, I woke up and I saw tweets that said that today is the anniversary of the first episode of The Guild being uploaded. Seven years. Hooray! Seven years of internet dumb. That's literally like a, a, thousand, That's a in, thousand in internet years. Year. Yeah, in, yeah, normal. sure. And uh, it's really cool to be able to celebrate this coincidence. And I think we're going to hit a million subscribers today. We're like 400 away on Geek and Sundry. So it's like a weird amalgam of all these things. And, you know, the journey has not been easy in any way, shape, or form from picking up a camera and shooting in my garage to like, you know, having an event site and a channel and all these shows that I get to make. And I guess the th one thing is um, just being able to work with my friends as a, as a profession, that's probably the best thing you could ever hope for is to be able to look around and see your most talented people around you and think about the people you enjoy spending the most time with and being able to say, hey, let's not only be friends, let's share our joy for something together and put it on film and then put it on the internet and then tweet about it a lot. I mean, it's really, it's kind of the best job ever. And um, really the journey has been everybody together. Me with my friends and me with you guys. So I don't know, I just, that's it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get sappy, but it's a weird, I could start crying any minute. <laughs> oh, it's exhaustion tears. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. You said that it was really hard, which is, uh, I think, a, an important thing to um, just to sort of uh, 
uh, highlight because this is a, a something that I, I believe it is my personal experience in my life has borne this out and uh, everything that I have uh, taught my kids has, uh, has, has supported this. Everything worth doing in our lives is hard. You know, if I mean, if a thing was easy, everybody would do it and it wouldn't matter, right? And, and like making something that's meaningful to you and hopefully is meaningful to other people, inspiring people, doing something that helps people, like adding something positive to the world is hard and it should be. And making the effort to do that is, is noble and meaningful and it is good to do things that are hard. And if something is hard, don't give up on it, uh, no matter what it is. Um, uh, except for trying to beat the Binding of Isaac. It's, that's not, that's, <laughs> there's a point where it's just like, you know what, flies, I get it. Um, uh, I want to tell you my most, one of, one of my most memorable moments with Tabletop uh, was an email that I got from a, uh, actually there's, there's two, I'll tell you the second one. Uh, the, the first one is that this, um, uh, a father emailed me and said, uh, this was like during about, about halfway through the second season of Tabletop. A father emailed me and he said, my family uh, has been sort of like just drifting apart over the last couple of years. My kids are teenagers. Uh, my wife and I work really long hours. We work really hard. And what has begun happening in our lives is we come home, we have dinner, uh, and then we just like go to our own corners and do our own things. And like, we, you know, maybe we'll watch a TV show together, but the kids go to their bedrooms and they play their video games and my wife goes to watch TV and I go to do, I forget. And, uh, and he said, and, but what happened is that we started watching tabletop and the kids said, hey, it would be great if we could have a family game night and we could play these games that we watch on tabletop. And he said, you brought my family back together with tabletop. We get together, uh, it started being once a week and now it's almost every night after dinner and we play a board game. And it has, and it's brought the family back together and strengthened our relationships. And I'm really happy to have been able to make something that, that did that. And I hear that story or a version of it all the time uh, at just about everywhere I go. Um, then uh, when we were doing uh, the Indiegogo for um, season three of Tabletop, um, a little boy sent a letter to Geek and Sundry with, with a, he was like, he's like six. And he sent a letter to Geek and Sundry with a, a six-year-old's drawing of uh, us sitting at the table playing games and little boy crayon writing that he wants to help make season three so people play more games and he wants us to have his allowance and he sent us a dollar, a one dollar bill. He did, it really happened. It really happened and I have the whole thing saved and I'm having it framed so that I can have it in my house because it's just a reminder of like, making tabletop is not easy. And we are not, like, we're not doing it because we're getting rich. We're doing it because we genuinely love it. And, uh, and, it is, and it's this reminder of, like, you know, the things that you do, like, the awesome things you do and the shitty things that you do, touch people in ways that you cannot even imagine. And, uh, and that is why it is so important to me to be awesome when you have the opportunity to be awesome or literally anything else. Um, the end. Felicia, there's a microphone that's so close you can probably see it. Where is it? I don't see it. Where? Oh, hold oh. It, hold it yes, up. Yes, I can see it. Don't try to hide the microphone. <laughs> thank you. Ready? Oh, wait, you were... Yes, no, that up. wasn't thank you. Show everybody what you're... Just show everybody. <laughs> well, the whole family is here in Star Trek uniforms, so uh, we got... Yeah. Oh, awesome. And wife over there. And that's wife. awesome. Well, uh, I, I have a, I have a question. Why are you guys so far apart? Is it just... Well, uh... It's hard to get tickets. And you can oh. buy two at once, so... Got it. Okay. Understood. So the question is about uh, Woodstock. If you could snap your fingers and have your dream guest, anybody, uh, who would it be and what would you do at Woodstock with that guest? And Felicia, I hope we uh, see you there in the future someday. Um, I love um, she, she's, Felicia's been at Woodstock. What did I do? Uh, Amy Berg made us kiss each other. Ew. It was gross. Um, if I could snap my fingers and do anything, I would make They Might Be Giants show up and play, play for us. Oh, that would be cool. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I could, if I could do anything. That, can you, that can is, you, is what I would Can do. you go back in time and undo that kiss? 
Like, no, just... it, would me- it would mess up the timeline. Really? Yeah, because then we wouldn't know how really horrible that experience is. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> the second time, I had to kiss you twice. Oh. You made me kiss you for the guild. Yeah, but that's movie acting. You could just go, I'm not here. <laughs> I guess. In your head. I tried that. <laughs> and then you were like, we need to have another take. <laughs> because it didn't look real for the cameras, you sick, weird, twisted people. <laughs> Who has the microphone? Microphone. Is it over? Mic- I can't <laughs> see it. I can't see it. I can it. see it. Oh, okay. good. Hi. Um, first off, Will, I need one more signature. What is it? For this photo, you're the only one that's missing. Wow, that sucks. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, that's a bummer. Just putting that out there. Um, Looks like you've carried that around for a long time, too. (laughs) Uh, is that a thing that we are we allowed to do that here? I mean, does this like open $20 up the floodgates to, uh, to like to smiles? No. Yeah, if you can. Give, give yeah. Oh yeah, twenty bucks. I will totally donate forty bucks if you'll. Well, hell yeah. Uh, cool, cool. Surely someone who would donate forty bucks would be willing to donate forty bucks <laughs> and uh, and a beer for Will Wheaton. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'd be happy to do that. Uh, pass the mic around and I'll do that. While, I'll sign that while we. You want a ten a.m. Beer? beer? Hold on. <laughs> Listen, no, I really, no I, I'm that's sorry. Really that's because he's a champion. <laughs> For the record, I've only drunk two sips of beer in my life, and when I drink it, I feel like I'm drinking bread. <laughs> Just physical bread sprouting Listen, in my stomach. you don't have to tell people how flawed you are. <laughs> there's a lot that we really, there's a lot that we really like about you. you. Um, and then my next question is oh, for wow. Alicia. Yeah. She has this picture of the cast of Buffy, and you're the only one not in the picture. I was wondering if you could share a fun story that you experienced on Dr. Horrible. Oh. <clears throat> I'll share a story. So I am whimsical. Uh, Aisha? Yes. That's the one you probably want to take. Oh, you might. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. eBay, bitches! <laughs> yeah, it just occurred to me that, like, you're kind of in a bad position right now on yeah. account of we have this. Yeah. <laughs> um. So tell us that great, tell us that great story about Dr. Horrible. So I'm whimsical, and I like to um, just experiment with things. And there's a scene um, in the laundromat uh, in Dr. Horrible, and we were shooting at the laundromat. Thank you. Um, and it, this, it was a very low budget production. Like it was barely, it was the size of a guild production toward the end. I mean, really, very low budget. Everybody was on shoestrings. Everybody's sitting around. No trailers. Nothing. We're all just hanging around. And next door to the laundromat was a blackened out door, okay? And I was like, and I saw a woman go in there and come out and I was like, ooh, are those drugs? Is that a drug place? And I got really excited because I don't know where they sell drugs. I always assumed parking lots or, you know, shady street corners or parks near fountains. Yeah, yeah, like within 100 feet of a school. Yeah. Yeah. So I all day wanted to go in here, and I saw a couple people going in and out. No sign, completely like blackened out, matte um, door. So I was like, I'm going in during lunch. And I opened the door, and inside was pro- it was like a bootleg Chinese bakery. <laughs> and it was the weirdest. It was like this guy, he's listening to the radio, and he's like, just watch, he's like watching the door very skinny and he's like sweets are piled all around him and they're weird you know have you seen those jelly treats you get in asia they're like pink and they have like uh, coconut on them and mochi and like all these very odd things and i was like oh 
yeah. <laughs> this is my drugs. I mean, I, I mean, sweet. It sounds my like drugs. you walked into the real life seven. <laughs> Maybe. But anyway, so I was like, oh, great. Here's, and he was like, can I have one of each? And he's like, how much? I was like, how much? He's like, he looks me up and down. He's like, $60. It was probably $10 worth of treats. But I was like, sure. Um, and I, 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 I give him the money. I take one of each and I'm like, here, guys, I got you a present. Not one person ate one of my Chinese well, treats. Well, yeah, because they're full of drugs. <laughs> I have a follow-up question for you. Sure. How did, how did you identify it as a bootleg Chinese bakery? Because clearly there was no there was no sign outside the door. There was no light. There's lots the of things without signs outside the door. It doesn't mean they're bootleg. Well, I've been to a great bootleg bar in Burbank. It, then I guess. What? Okay. What does bootleg mean? B a bootleg is where like that's when you make like a fake Louis Vuitton wallet. Okay. These were fake. Asian tree. How do you make, but that's not, it's not possible to make a fake Asian treat. It's being made by an Asian guy using the ingredients that go into, there's nothing fake about it. I did not see you a kitchen back there. You just got ripped off. It was, it was the most hipster pop-up ever, okay? I will accept that as an answer. Who has the microphone? Yes. Hello, Felicia, Will. Hi, it's Brian. Hi, Brian. Uh, Felicia, thank you for such quality program like The Guild and Spooked. I love both those shows amazingly. Thank you so much. And Will, thank you for Tabletop. And You're I, welcome. And I'm a, contribu a contributor to the next season. And, thank you. And I was wondering... High both, five. That was high five. Thank you. <laughs> Wasn't anything weirder. <laughs> I was just wondering, in this upcoming season and also the RPG show, what are you guys most forward looking to uh, playing with and what games that you like, would like to premiere? Uh, I, I, I can't discuss a lot of the specifics about the RPG show because we are way far out from production on that. We probably won't begin production on that until December or January, but I have chosen the system. I've done a little bit of work on the world building already. Um, it's uh, an indie RPG system that I really, really like uh, that's published by a company that I love and the concept behind that will be uh, me as the game master plus uh, four or five players playing a season-long campaign. So it'll be, imagine it, imagine it being like, sort of like if you played the Temple of Elemental Evil back in the old days, it's a pretty good-sized campaign that if you played it with your group would probably be about a three-month-long campaign, but we'll be playing that over the course of like around 20, one, 20 to 22 episodes, depending on the demands of the story. Hopefully it will have the same sort of dramatic arc and narrative as you would get from uh, an hour-long television series. We expect the episodes to finish out at around 42 minutes apiece, um, and, uh, and it'll be a real storytelling, like hopefully emotionally engaging experience for everyone. As far as the games that we're looking into for Tabletop Season 3, uh, I haven't locked everything down just yet. We are getting into that uh, phase of pre-production right now. I am going to do uh, a series of uh, kind of quick uh, bluffing games. So we'll play Love Letter and Coup and, uh, and probably um, uh, uh, Cockroach Poker. Thank you, I know, I'm so tired. Um, and, uh, and then we're gonna do an episode that is geared specifically for families. It's uh, games you play with kids. Uh, a, a, you know, like games that are like geared toward younger players. Um, and I'm um, look, really looking forward to that. And then we're the, probably the number one most requested thing we have ever gotten is that uh, we play Cards Against Humanity. So we're going to do... <laughs> We're, we're going to do an episode that we're calling Tabletop After Dark, <laughs> and, and, it's going, and it's going to be um, a, 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 a super dirty, really not safe for work, no one should watch this, we will be awful um, kind of game. Uh, and and I, um, well, you know, a terrible I, I, person. I got uh, I, I, ha uh, I got a c uh, 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 Kevin Smith and Jamie said they would come play with us on tabletop. So I am hoping that we will be able to book them for that episode because we really want to be dirty and horrible, terrible people and really help people in the audience understand why we have been saying since the beginning, we really shouldn't play Cards Against Humanity on tabletop. <laughs>
Uh, also, like, just really quickly, Will and I did an At Midnight, and he also was on my podcast, and everything we've said, I've gotten the blank card sent to me, like, some of the filthiest stuff, and I'm like, how did, why did we let that come out of our mouths, and now why is it a meme? <laughs> so, yeah, that's gonna be awesome we get, when you guys do it's, that. It's, Aisha's one of my friends that when we go to do a thing together in public, it just becomes, like, super awful, repulsive, dirty chicken. Like, who can be, who can be the worst? Don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah, oh, oh, man. <laughs> It is really the best. Totally. Oh, there was so much hobo cum in that episode of, of At Midnight. Cover that we the baby's did. ears. It, and also uh, he, on my he podcast. Doesn't know, he doesn't know what a hobo is. Don't worry about no. it. Okay, good. Yes, where's the, where's covering, the microphone? Is the microphone to ears. this side of the room yet? I feel like the microphone should make it to this side of the room. The, the yeah, Mike Fairness. Oh, oh it yes. is. Hello. Right. Nice, shirt. nice shirt. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. I just want to say thank you so much, both of you, for all of your creativity and for sharing your passion. I'm an actor and an avid board game player, and you're both very inspirational to me. Oh, thanks. Awesome to hear. So my question to you is, both of you, do you have an idea for a game that you'd like to design? Well, during one episode of Tabletop, I discovered my muse, and he was a doctor. He's a doctor zombie with a past that's pretty tormented. And to me, I think the best thing would be to feature the journey of said doctor through um, the phases of hell even as he reads magazines and touches himself through all the circles of hell. You like it? If this game is true to the character of Dr. Effing Hannah, all it's one card, and you draw the card out of the deck, and you play it down, and it says you're useless and do nothing, and you lose the game. <sighs> Dr. Hannah's Inferno. That's my pitch. Uh, I hate how much I like that. <laughs> I had an idea to build a game that was based off of the novel that John Scalzi wrote called Red Shirts. Um, it's sort of a cooperative competitive game where the uh, one group is playing as the characters in a si bad science fiction TV show and one p set of players is playing as the writers on that bad science fiction TV show. <laughs> now, neither, w neither, set, neither side wants the show to be canceled, so you have to work cooperatively to make the show exciting and have good ratings, but the Characters don't want to get killed, so they have to work against the writers who are trying to make the show exciting by killing them. I thought this would be a really fun, really terrific game to make, and John was on board with it, and, and we had, uh, my, my friend and I had begun to do some work on it, and then he went to the Gamma Trade Show, and he came back with this game called Red Shirts um, that somebody had already made. It's not like my idea, but it's Red Shirts enough that I don't know if it will work, but um, it's still actually a thing that I have in development that I think would be, that, that I think would be a, a lot of fun. I like those semi-cooperative, semi-competitive games. They're pretty great. Next question. Question. Hi, that's me. Hello. Um, welcome to America's craft beer capital here in San Diego. I know. Uh, hello. <laughs> Is that true? How do you quantify that? Oh, well, I said so, so. Yeah. I'm just going to say Kansas City, Denver, Minneapolis, Seattle, oh, and Portland on. might disagree with come you. Come on. <laughs> but we're in San Diego. So my husband's a brewer at Stone. I know that we oh, awesome. and Aisha did a, a collaboration. Yay, beer. beer. I thought, I guess Felicia probably doesn't really have anything to say about it. I don't that. like liquid bread. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so I thought maybe uh, Keep endearing Will yourself and, uh, to the audience. <laughs> Will and Aisha might want to talk about that collaboration and what other breweries you might be visiting while you're in town. Um, well, I, I was invited to do this. This is the second iteration of a beer that Will and Drew Curtis and uh, Greg... I'm so, it's so early. What's Greg's last name? Cook. Cook, thank you. I was going to say Koch. That's a different person. Um, uh, brewed last year called Boot Stout. We did Boot Stout 2.0. It's an imperial stout with pecans and wheat. Pecans from Drew and wheat, and wheat from Will and chocolate from me. What, what? <laughs> and, uh, and quarter-aged in bourbon barrels. Quarter-aged in bourbon, bourbon barrels. barrels. Moves back in before bottling. It's delicious. It is like liquid bread uh, or liquid bread pudding or liquid awesome, Felicia. Liquid yeah. awesome is what it is. Yeah, and if you drink a bottle by yourself, there's a bad idea bear in the bottom of each one. All I'm saying is sign out of Amazon and eBay before you drink this yes. beer. Yes. But tell the best part about, um, about uh, the art on the bottle, which was the most amazing thing. The art on the bottle of Woodstout 2.0 was drawn by Dave Gibbons. Co-creator of The Watchmen. 
who turned so, us into superheroes. Turned us into superheroes. So Aisha and Drew and I are on the are in this bottle as superheroes. Yeah. Great. And what was your superhero name? Um, my superhero name was uh, rapier. The, the the his he uses his rapier like wit. Yes. Uh, uh, to do things to people. And my name was the the mercenary, but it's spelled like Mircene, M Y R C E N E, which is the compound in hops that makes beer bitter. Ah. Mine was uh, Lady Temerarius. I rush headlong into danger without forethought or preparation. Yes. <laughs> and Drew's superhero name was Captain Obvious. Yes. He can, Which he needs he no just, he just tells you what's going on. That is who um, he is. It was really fun. It was a wonderful experience for, uh, for, for all of us. Um, I got to go to Liberty Station and brew a collaboration beer. I did a, a White Sage IPA. Um, uh, with uh, with Chris Ketchum, that was great. It's really good. Um, Rylea Vanderbilt did a uh, a, a ginger a lemon uh, hefeweizen that's super delicious. And then Bobak Ferdowsi, who a lot of you probably know as the NASA Mohawk guy, uh, Bobak did a, um, a cucumber jalapeno uh, blonde ale. That is, I know it sounds like the weirdest thing in the world, but it's really super delicious. You can get it at the Stone Tap Room downtown. You can get it at Liberty Station and up in Escondido. You can get uh, our beer great. at Costco. You can get our beer, yeah. And our, our beer actually, it's kind of a big deal. Like it's, it's, it's very rare and you can only get it in Kentucky and California. Um, uh, just because the, the brewing schedule didn't allow us to make more. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any time to visit any craft breweries while I'm down here, um, but uh, I always make an effort to drink local craft beer when I go around places to see what different cities bring to that experience. Um, and uh, I had a double IPA last night called Damned from Beaver something or other. Uh, that was actually really super good. I liked it an awful lot. And, I, and they're in like... Uh, a city whose name has gone out of my head, but is within, you know, 100 miles of here. And Will is a really accomplished home brewer, so he just drinks craft beers in his own home all the time that he made himself. It's true. <laughs> this whole conversation now makes me empathize with normal people listening to me talk about video games. <laughs> it's good, I know that look. I know like, that look. Uh -huh. uh, who's got the mic? Hi guys. Hi. Uh, my name is Joe. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about uh, how you guys very first met and the conversation that led to you collaborating. And well, you've already touched on this, but Felicia, if you have anything new coming down the pipe that you could share with us. Good question, Joe. Um, <laughs> so my friend, uh, my co-producer on the Guild, Kim Evie, um, lovely, fantastic woman. She knew Will from um, Acme Sketch for, Yeah, Fest. Kim and I were in shows together and we wrote sketches together. And Kim was the only writing teacher I ever had. I took one sketch writing class and she was my teacher and I was like, I love this woman. And then we met later after I fell off the writing wagon and she was like, you should write more. And that's how the guild happened. And I used to come see you in the Bravo show yeah, and I was at like, Acme <gasps> and you were actually, you stood out in that Bravo show. You were oh, good in that you. Bravo show. Well, I was excited to meet you because as a 12-year-old, in my dreams, I married Riker all the time. Yeah. Many times. I would yeah. put my small 12-year-old hand in his beard, and I'd be like, I love you, honey. And we'd go to, like, Disneyland and get in the teacup ride. So, <laughs> torrid affair. Um, anyway, so, later... <laughs> Later, um, I was writing Guild Season 3, and I knew that I wanted to have a rival guild be um, a storyline in that, in, in that um, season. And I thought, well, I always like to write parts for actors because it's the most fun. I, just, I like to look at somebody and be like, hey, what would they do awesome, or what do they normally not do that I want them to do? And um, immediately, I had this idea of this character, Fox, who's the rival guild leader, who is this very intellectual, pretentious condescending but in the heart you know still sexy okay eh. it's uh, good okay. to have an acting challenge it is yes clearly i mean to be condescending yeah so basically i was like kim can you ask will to go to lunch uh to lunch or to a coffee or something with me and she she connected us and then where did we go we went to the to the most pretentious coffee place in Silver Lake. I can't remember what it was called. L.A. And, Mill. And, 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 La and, the, Mill. and the way that Felicia pitched it to me was, will you play a douchebag in a kilt? And I was, <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I am on board with that. $40 worth of coffee. Like Which we ordered, is less than what's on this table. No, no, we right ordered now. four cups of coffee to compare the beans. It was kind of like the equivalent of my Chinese bakery. Um, just to see, like, what the pure expression of the bean was. because they Actually kept using said them. that on the menu. Yeah, pure um, expression yeah. of the bean. And it was, it was good coffee. 
Um, yeah. But but very pretentious. Not forty dollars worth. No. And the, but very much the kind of place Fox would take someone. That's what we decided by the end of it. And that's yeah. when we, he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And yeah. I was like, whoo. And then he got to be in, you know, three, all the, all the remaining seasons. Yeah, it was, was really good great. It was really wonderful. I loved playing that character. I loved working on the guild. Um, it was a wonderful experience for me. And um, uh, I know that I've thanked you privately. I don't know if I've ever thanked you in public for it, but thank that's you for not, that. Oh, thank you. Now it's awkward. Mm. Guys, I have a, actual, I have a question awkward? from the Facebook page for you guys. Oh, oh wow. Um, so from the Nerd Machine Facebook page, Jason. I really is thought that, that really it would your, be. Is that your would phone? Would you like this This is my page? phone. I don't know would if you, you guys like know. Page and hey, I want to play Candy Crush with you. <laughs> that, that would be a real question from Facebook. <laughs> with you. Um, or, hey, like my page and I'll send you a phone. XOXO, yeah. heart, heart, heart. Boobs. Yes, boobs. <laughs> Teen 425B. Okay, so um, my phone, Boner by the way, Hitler this is from the future. It's called Paper. Um... <laughs> Jason wants to know if you could play one game with one person from history, real or fictional, who would it be and what game would you play? Uh, it would be Seven Minutes in Heaven with Karen Gillan. I co-sign that completely. I would play... Your move, Felicia. Uh, I would play Pong with Sartre, because that sounded super pretentious. <laughs> oh, if I wasn't so tired, I could riff on that for minutes. I know. That's a great answer. We'll, we'll rewind time and do yeah, it. Yeah, I really like that. Next, Next question. question seems to be in that direction. Yes, sir. Hi guys, um, I want to be script writer, so I was wondering when you're doing a script, what makes you say yes to a character? That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, when I read a script, I want the ladies not to be useless. And it's got to pass the Bechdel test. Not to just be like, yeah, honey, you're great. Go do wacky things. Um, and Billy Sue DeConnick says that if you can replace your female characters with a lamp, and have, and have the same thing happen, you have not written a good female character. Yeah, and surprisingly, there are a lot of roles like that, yes. especially in movie scripts for women, comedy movie scripts for women. Yeah. They are all lampos. Um, I, I, I also, to me, being like a, the geek person, um, I get a lot, offered a lot of things that are geeky girls. Um, and to me, it's got to be another person underneath that who, if you took geeky off of it, there's still an interesting person with problems. And... Um, that's why I'm really lucky to have played sort of uh, geeky, geeky girl roles, different kinds of them in Eureka and Supernatural, because they're so well written. They're so well written. And I turned down like 10 times those, you know, just because I'm like, nah, you know, she's, stop it. Just stop with the quirky hair, stop it. There's uh, generally that comes down to two. There's there's two factors, and uh, like hopefully they they both exist in the same script. Uh, the project is interesting and it's well written and it tells a story that I care about. Uh, and then the character has like offers me something to do um, that that is interesting, that's challenging, that's not something I have done over and over and over again that I feel like I can make an emotional connection to. People ask me all the time if I would want to go do something and, and like re recreate the role of Wesley Crusher. And the answer to that question is, is always no, because I've done everything that I could possibly ever want to do with that character, and it's not interesting to me anymore. Um, and uh, uh, I think that a lot of actors would tell you the same thing, that, that they want to play a character that is interesting, that doesn't, you know, you're going to live with that character for months, right? Jerry Seinfeld says, if, you're, if you see a bad movie, you're there for an hour and a half. If you're in a bad movie, it's five months of your life. So, so you want to, you know, hopefully choose things that, that are, you know, that are, that are meaningful to you. It looks like we're down to, like, the last 50 seconds. Of, oh, uh, one more okay. question. Well, oh, yes. Okay, yes. one more mic. Is there a specific uh, video game genre or series that you two would like to play a character in? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like the, um, I, I love, love the Dragon Age series. And one of us gets to do that already. Um, yeah. 
I, I loved the Fallout series. Oh, yeah. Um, and we both got to be in New Vegas. But honestly, um, just because it means that it would exist, I would very much like to be a character in Half-Life 3. Get on that, Gabe. Uh, mine would be Fallout because I love being dirty. I was, I, I... Come on now. I, I like, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a street urchin. I like, you know, could, please, oh, sir. Oh, she's doing accents, fantastic. What are you talking about? This is my British accent. I'm gonna kill you. Um, so. <laughs> I would love to play an evil person and have to like shave my head in a weird mohawk, like Borderlands. You realize that, that video games are animated. I do my voice work. I'm a dedicated actor. <laughs> Anywho. Um... Uh, a, a slightly more serious answer is uh, a series that like, I was really emotionally affected by The Last of Us. Yes. Um, uh, I mean, it really, it really was, it was a wonderful example of, of really great storytelling and uh, just the way that, you know, you kind of root for people as you play it and then you realize, I probably shouldn't have rooted for that character. Um, and it's really interesting and, and uh, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm very good friends with, with, uh, with Troy and Ashley, so I've got to really talk to them about the process of making that game and all the mocap that they did and all the like real actual acting and how it goes into the creation of those characters. And I, I would love to be involved with something like that because I feel like it's very groundbreaking in, in terms of a video game being something that can very much rival the emotional experience and the storytelling experience that we have when we are watching a, a, a series or, uh, or a movie that really touches us. Um, it, it is one of the really great tangible examples of video games as legitimate art. Uh, and to be able to be part of that uh, in a way that disproves what people who have an agenda that, that requires them to not respect video games as art, uh, to, like, to be part of something like that would be really awesome and I think a little punk rock. I'd like to be in Mass Effect so people can have cutscene CGI sexy times with me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Felicia Day and Will Wayne. Thank you.